the new landscape of TYA in Asia and Oceania during the pandemic. In the beginning, when schools were closed and many theaters faced a shutdown, we didn't think the situation would last this long. However, soon after the coronavirus turned into a seemingly endless pandemic, those of us who work in the field of performing arts, specifically in TYA, were in a panic because we understand that liveness is essential to us and children are so vulnerable to this kind of disease. Asia and Oceania are so large that we can't say we are all in the same situation. But most areas and regions suffered from the virus and experienced lockdowns or semi-lockdowns. So, survival as an artist has been a big issue for us since the pandemic began. Many Asian countries and governments actually have few support systems to help artists who are at risk financially. Even more worrying is the fear of losing our audiences and our contacts with them during the pandemic and even after COVID-19 because we heavily depend on live audiences. Meeting or contacting audience with shows is the top priority for any performing artist, even in normal times. Due to the pandemic, we have lost this very basic thing. Therefore, we had to reconnect this link first and maintain it even in a very basic way rather than thinking about the income we were losing. Some groups started to organize online shows or educational programs for kids who were isolating at home. Going virtual has been a great way to keep connecting artists with audiences in this strange time. It has also easily linked artists with artists who couldn't travel globally, even though it sometimes caused Zoom hangovers after too many online meetings. Many TYA companies started to use being online more creatively as a way of expanding artistic expressions, widening their audience and removing barriers. These innovations look to continue even after the pandemic and they could be a new normal. Wearing masks has also become normal in many Asian countries. It's been mandatory for people in a lot of Asian countries to wear face masks in public spaces. Even during rehearsals, artists should wear masks and sanitize their hands as often as possible. These things are all inconvenient and sometimes annoying, but we have been willing to put up with them so as to keep safe. When theaters reopened with limited seats for social distancing, we had to urge caution for the health of both ourselves and our audience. Some productions are using plastic wall dividers on stage to protect the audience and themselves from the virus. Some companies have organized outdoor productions and events to reduce the fear of COVID-19. Others have also produced small productions to visit local areas with smaller numbers of audiences to avoid the dense gatherings. Some companies have also created play toolkits 
to be delivered to home, and parents by themselves have used them to play with their kids at home. We just want to do our best to meet and keep connected to our audiences and colleagues in various ways during the difficult time. We still don't know when this pandemic will end. That's terrible. On the other hand, this moment can also be a precious time to reconsider our meeting with the audience. Without COVID-19, we might not have had the chance to rethink about it in this way. We really miss the time we could freely see each other in the theater at, at school. I really miss the curious eyes of our audience. Until that time, when we can see each other face to face and hold hands together, please stay safe and stay connected. <laughs>